We are on the Foxy Forum tonight. This is Foxy Dame, and I'm here with the gorgeous Dr. Harmony. Good evening, everybody. And we are talking about transgender tonight. Yes, transgender. What does transgender mean? Well, it was funny. I did a little posting earlier today on Facebook where I said we're a couple of GGs talking about TG. And um, I got a chance to, in August, go to the Southern Comfort Conference, which is in Atlanta. It's a, a big, huge conference. Mm-hmm. And it's not talking about Southern Comfort, the, the liquor. No. It's actually talking about uh, transgender. And while I was there, I had people saying, you're a GG, you're a GG, hey, GG. And I'm like, well, no, my name is Angie, not GG. And then I was, it dawned on me, it means something. It means genetic, genetic girl. girl. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were a few people, there were 814 people at that conference. It was just one of the most amazing experiences that I had, Dr. Harmony. And it really stretched me because I really enjoy learning about alternative lifestyle, but I really didn't have a clue about anything about transgender. So it was really amazing to meet all of those people, to be part of a loving family for a couple of days and to get to embrace their lifestyle. What were some of the observations that you made of the group of people that you met there? Well, the funniest thing was that, um, you know, when you when you go to a conference like that, um, the people are dressed up, and many of them, mm-hmm. some are cross-dressers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the majority of the people there were men who were, you know, male to female, um, rather than female to male. There was less of those. Um, but um, you're seeing all these people. They love doing the things that we as genetic girls just typically do. You know, have their nails done, have their hair done, wear heels, wear, you know, sexy dresses. That sort of thing. And it was very funny because many of these people, this is a very, can be at times a very private, secret part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, what I noticed was I was there on a Thursday through a Sunday. And by Saturday, I happened to be on the elevator with a lady and uh, she just looked rather upset. And I said, oh, honey, I said, what's wrong? And she said, it's tough being a girl three days in a row. My feet hurt from these heels. And I'm like, well, sister, <laughs> welcome to the club. You know, it's just so it was kind of interesting to see that part of it. And then on Saturday night, they do this amazing ball and everybody gets dressed up. And I'm telling you, the outfits were just absolutely amazing. And it was a beautiful ceremony that night, a beautiful dinner. And uh, the thing that was really funny was by about 10 o'clock, I'm still in my, you know, my heels and my mm-hmm. sexy dress, my elegant dress. And most of them had gone to change and had jeans on and tennis shoes. And I'm like, what's up with that? And I'm like, I could go till two, three in the morning in these heels. You well, know, you have so a little more training. I got a little more training. So a little more practice. That was just that was just fun. And then also there was a, a you know, I think the neatest thing about it was how these people were truly embracing what they felt on the mm-hmm. inside. Mm-hmm. They were. Um, you know, either their families and many times were involved. Uh, interestingly enough, I met this one lady who is uh, owns a very large construction company. And for her construction company, she goes as a female and does the deals. And then when she goes out onto the construction sites, she actually is the, the boss man mm-hmm. and works with the subcontractors. And it's the same person, but she has these two different personalities. And she's married, has a family and, and three daughters. And it's, it's just amazing. So, I mean, there were just so many stories that came out of that. And I was really touched by them. You know, what's interesting is that we, we tend to sort of think about the, the superficial portions of the whole transgender world and, mm-hmm. and maybe some of the psychosocial stressors. But can you imagine having been born and being within your skin and not and being so uncomfortable with your skin that you want to remove your body parts? Oh, you want yeah. to completely change. I mean, I've had clients that were going through the shift or were coming to see me because it's a requirement in order to uh, most plastic surgeons before they'll go through and start doing the the the. Um, um, Gender, gender reconstru- reassignment. Yeah, the mm-hmm. gender reassignments that they want them to be going through therapy and, and have psychological testing done and the whole nine yards. And, you know, I've had clients have come in that have physically said that they it, it was hard for them not to take a knife and cut their own body parts off because they just they just felt like that they weren't even a part of them, that they were almost disconnected in a way from those organs. Well, and I, I completely understand that I had a chance to go to lunch with two female to male um, folks that had tra- had mm-hmm. done transitions, and one of the, the gentlemen told me that when, when he was 11 and started to develop breasts, that he, he would punch them in to make them go away and would also um, fake having injuries to an ankle or a leg or something to get ace bandages and would wrap the ace bandages around just to make the breasts go away. Mm-hmm. Now, as a female, as a genetic you know, girl, um, I love my tatas. You know, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy them. I paint with them for good, goodness sake. So, I mean, I really love having them. So, so it's a foreign concept to me to think, oh my gosh, I would feel so bad about my breasts. Um, mm-hmm. so, so to feel that, it's unbelievable. Now, here's another interesting thing too. Uh, many times when they make the change, they also change their name. 
to mm-hmm. whether it's a female or a male name. And so I a- happened to ask these two gentlemen at lunch. I said, well, how did you come up with your name? Now, they had never discussed this with each other, but they both said, well, it was a guy we were attracted to, not sexually, but just attracted to in style and finesse and who they were while they were in school. That was both oh, of them had sexy. named themselves after guys that they found. If I was a guy, that's who I'd want to be. Oh. And that's how they came up with their names. I'm like, that's unbelievable. Now, I know other people. Um, the reason I was at the Southern Comfort Conference is I have a very dear friend, and her name is Terry. And, um, you know, in, in her other name is, is a very a masculine name, but could be a last name. So she uses that together as her name. So, I mean, you know, there's all, but that's a kind of a unique thing and try to do a new identification for yourself. So if you were a male, who would you choose? Well, <laughs> if I was a male, well, I know that my mom said to me when I was born that if I had been a boy, I would be called Lonnie. So I would have been Lonnie Fox, I guess. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if Lonnie really, I don't know if I really thought about that. I I don't know if I have a male name. I don't know. I like Angie. Is there anybody, anybody that you are attracted to? Like if you were a man who you would want to be, Um, kind of in that perspective, if if you were going to go through the transition and you see a man's man. I would probably say either Sean Connery or Pierce Brosnan. You know, those yeah, two really I like those two as um, well. are pretty hot for me. They are. You know, they, just, they, they do for me, I guess. I, I, I have a weakness for Antonio Banderas, I got to tell you. Really? Oh, yeah. Yum, really? Yum, wow. yum. I have a pass. Jim gave me a pass for Antonio oh, Banderas. Oh, my. <laughs> You're a lucky lady. I am. I am. But, but you know, you know, there's been some TV shows with transgender. There was a really interesting television show, and, and I forget the name, and it'll come to me in a few minutes. Um, I'll look it up after the break. There is this really famous uh, transgender uh, individual. She's been in lots of, she was um, in several movies, and she's very famous. She actually had a bachelorette show that was a wow. transgender bachelorette show and it was quite interesting in fact you can you can get it on netflix and and we'll look up that name and talk about it when we get back okay well you know there's been a few um cases that have come up or one particular case that has happened in the last month in in december that happened there was um a former police officer who underwent a sex operation five years ago uh, named lena lawless and was challenging the lpj's ban on transgender players and i saw this story a friend had uh, sent this to me back in October. And uh, when it happened on December 2nd, the LPGA players voted to allow transgender players to compete on the tour. Hmm. And the players voted to remove the female at birth requirement from the tour constitution. So, you know, mazel tov to Lena Lawless. She's able to play now on the, on the tour, on the LPGA. As, as a golfer. As a golfer. What do you think about that? Well, I... Um, I've looked at some of Elena's things online and uh, some of the press that was received about that. I guess, you know, um, I often like to play from the men's tees with the boys. I know you do. So, and I can, and I often can outdrive them. I know you can. <laughs> so, you know, as from that standpoint, I guess, you know, uh, if it's fair or not, you know, the question remains too, I wasn't there an, um, an Olympic athlete. I think that they were questioning the gender mm-hmm. of that individual and there's some records. I mean, there definitely are differences between male and female. I mean, I honestly cannot swing a golf club as you know, hard or as, you know, um, well, we know structurally, that structurally, there are. right. There's definitely things. So I guess, but you know, this is something that they chose to embrace. How so. is that any different than, and then the baseball surgery, you see a lot of the pitchers having that, what is it? The Ron, Johnny, Ron, Johnny surgery where they go and they change the tendon and it has them throw the ball differently. And, and that originally they had had the surgery because they kept having tendon tears and now they're voluntarily doing it because they're finding their better pitchers after. Right. Do you, are you familiar with the surgery I'm talking yeah, to? Yes. So how would that be any different than maybe a sex change operation and, and, and allowing that person to be on a professional team? Well, you know, kudos to the LPGA for allowing this to happen and have Lena be able to compete. We posted some interesting articles on our Foxy Forum fan page on Facebook, actually. I, I posted mm-hmm. one specifically that talked about some of the laws that were coming about in various states about uh, the rights of transgendered individuals within the workplace, because that is a huge is- issue within the workplace. I mean, locally, we had the Su- Susan Stanton issue. Exactly. What, was, was that uh, Largo? She was uh, mayor of Largo, I think, or city, no, city, um, city manager, city manager, city manager, manager Largo, Largo mm-hmm. and, and was fired. And uh, after, after she came out and had decided to, to say, hey, this is what I'm going through and this is what's happening, had been up for some other positions in Sarasota and such and, and hasn't been able to, as far as I have heard, t- to be able to find work since. And so that, that can be absolutely devastating. However, there have been a lot of companies, um, and in fact, uh, you, you can find it on our Foxy Forum um, fan page mm-hmm. uh, in that article that, that have very specific rules within their company where they actually are supportive 
of transgendered individuals in some major companies, which is kind of exciting. Well, you know, it was interesting when I was at the Southern Comfort Conference in Atlanta, I met this lady and she told me a really positive story about what had happened at her work. She went up for a review. She worked at an auto dealership, mm-hmm. a very valuable person in, in, in the company. And she went up for a review. And after she was done, she was, had great work performance. Um, the boss said to her, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? And she said, yes, I would like to transition. Uh, at the time, she was a male and would like to transition and, and be a female. I would like to be able to be that here in the workplace. And they said to her, Absolutely. We are such a valuable part of our company. We appreciate you tremendously. And if that would make you happy, absolutely. So within a couple of weeks, they had changed the plate on her door. They had given her new business cards. She was, you know, started wearing skirts to work, that sort of thing. And it really, I mean, it was just an amazing story and kudos to that company. And I hope she's listening tonight because I had messaged her that we were having the show. I certainly hope that that, that, uh, I, I think it's wonderful that the company recognized the happiness of their employees and how that that is actually producing a better employee. I think that's one of the cultures that we see in some of the more modern companies that are actually being born, like out of the tech companies like Microsoft and Google, where they're being so much more accommodating to their employees, where they they just don't care what their employees are doing in the bedroom. They, do, they, they just support them. They offer mm-hmm. partnership benefits and allow them to dress casually at work or work from home or or where these sort of things aren't relevant. Mm-hmm. And so exactly. the staff stays happy. And if staff stays happy, then staff is productive. Exactly, exactly. So that was a really neat, positive story about that. You know, the other thing is, too, that I noticed from being at the convention was that many times the things that we just kind of take for granted as females, the things that we enjoy, you know, being able to dress in, in certain styles of clothing. Panties. And panties. Pretty oh, panties. Pretty panties and heels and all that. It was really neat to see the vendors because they had larger sized heels. They had things designed mm-hmm. for people. Now, the other interesting thing is, too, with my background in alternative lifestyle, I've done a lot of work with nudist resorts, with swing clubs, those sort of things, where cameras are not allowed. Typically, it's absolutely taboo to have a camera anywhere. What I noticed at the Southern... Um, Uh, comfort conference was that many people loved the camera and would bring it to the events because they love having pictures taken of themselves and many of them too would have a professional um, studio do a series of pictures as them as a male or a female or whatever it was as they were transitioning exactly that's why that was interesting those legendary videos that we had talked about Mm -hmm. a couple of episodes back i think would be a neat way to kind of uh document your transition Right. And in fact, we, we're going to be doing a phone interview with uh, Dina D. Page, who I met, who is one of the, the speakers at the convention. She's going to be on in our in our next segment. Um, but she has an amazing um, sexuality identification system. And if you go to her website, she has a transition where she shows where she was a male and then during and then after. And she's absolutely stunning. So um, and, wh- and while I just mentioned that um, her website is um, Dina D. Page, it's D-I-N-A D. P A I G E dot com, and you can check that out because she'll be up in our next segment. So, oh, that's exciting! Yeah, you can hear us right now on uh, Tan Talk Radio Network at the AM thirteen forty WTA in Clearwater, AM thirteen fifty WDCF Dade City, AM fourteen hundred WZHR Zephyr Hills, AM eighteen eighty KLRG Little Rock, Arkansas, and always live on the web www.tantalk1340.com and of course I am live I am on Yahoo Dr. Dot Harmony if you'd like to chat with us during the show we love all the feedback we've been getting and so and this is a fun topic tonight transgender this, is an interesting thing I, it's very interesting and in fact if you have questions please I am in them in because this is the day to ask so stay with us you're listening to the Foxy Forum 